Wasn't so bad. I feel fine. One question. Does, did, did Brandon leave the sh show last week for good or just for the show? For good. <laughs> Your prediction <laughs> that Penn State was going to win <laughs> okay. made him leave uh, forever. forever. Oh, sorry, Brandon. And Wait. you were almost right. I know. Please come back. <laughs> You're going to have to pick up the slack. I'm sorry. I'm just going to sit here silently and drink this fine voodoo beer. Yeah, Ooh. this is delicious. Kevin brought us some special beer to sure. enjoy as sure. we're... Getting ready for the stretch run of the season here, trying to keep the eight and four dream alive, or maybe even the nine and three nine dream. And three. I would love to go spoil mm -hmm. Michigan State season at the end of the year. We'll see. If we could spoil both Michigan team <laughs> seasons great. before this year is over, oh, and what? also beat Maryland and Rutgers, oh, it's a success. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, something to play for. And I think we're feeling better. We hope you are too. Grab your pencil and your paper. It's the obligatory PSU pregame show. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, hey, welcome back. It's the obligatory PSU pregame show. We are a man down, obviously. Uh, Brandon Noble did not leave the show forever, but from time to time, as a former NFL player, he has some obligations related to the league, to broadcast stuff that he does, so Brandon couldn't be here with us, which is a shame, yeah. because I think we got a lot to talk about. Where are we, by the way? We're here at a new spot this week, once again. Yeah. Pine Grove Hall in Pine Grove Mills. Super cool new spot, one of many places here in Happy Valley that we encourage you to check out. Whether you're watching us locally or coming into town for a game or coming in during the long football off season, which we encourage you to do. Yeah. I am your fake host, Chris Bucanani, joined to my left by beloved campus icon, Mike the Mailman. Hi everybody, welcome back. We're here again. Yeah. Almost, Mike. Almost. Almost. We're getting there. You, you, you were so ready to throw it in our faces <laughs> if the Lions pulled that one out. Yeah. They came within two plays of doing that. Well, we'll talk about it. Okay. And former OnwardState.com managing editor, Kevin Horn. That is me. You went to Columbus. I was in Columbus, yes. As is your want, you follow yes. the team to every road game, Indeed. every bowl game. How, what was it like out there? It was strange. Uh, this was... It turns out incorrectly, probably the first game since 2014-ish that I've spent the whole day getting ready for and walking to the stadium thinking there is a 0% chance that Penn State wins this game. Yeah, sure. And it was honestly, there was, it was, there was no anxiety all day, there was no pressure all day. <laughs> it was very strange, and it's the first time I felt that way in many years. Um, and it turned out to be actually sort of incorrect because the, the uh, anxiety ramped up pretty quickly there once I saw that Penn State had a pulse. Uh -huh. But uh, it, was, it was a relatively relaxing quick trip compared to most of these, given once you pick up your second loss, the whole thing sort of changes. Yeah, well, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the game. You said on last week's show that the fan treatment in Columbus, look, it's hit or miss everywhere, depending on who you run into. It's no. all anecdotal. But generally, those fans tend to feel pretty confident going into the Penn State game, so they don't treat you too badly. Did the mood in the stadium change over the course of the night? No, I mean, I found it odd that they stormed the field. Um, I'm not Very gonna, bizarre. I'm not going to be a, a fan police on that. I guess if you want to storm the field, storm the field. But that was a little strange. Um, I mean, the Horseshoe's never really been an intimidating environment. Um, it, it's, it's not nearly as loud as Iowa, not nearly as loud as, as Beaver Stadium. It's not. I mean, it, it's sort of middle of the road. I mean, it was packed. It was almost 100% full. But no, I mean, look, their fans are confident. They generally don't give you too much crap. I mean, some places particularly in the West, because they're never going to break out of sort of their 8-4, and 9-3 and three shell, talking about you, Iowa, and Wisconsin. You can't walk 100 feet without just getting chirped at mercilessly over and over and over again. You just got to put your head down and walk through it. Ohio State, they really don't say much. It was an incident after the game, which I'm not going to talk about on television, but uh, hopefully Johnny does not zoom in on my right eye. We'll keep it at that. You can learn more maybe on the obligatory PSU podcast, which you can find wherever you get your podcasts, right? Maybe you'll I can't tell, tell us a, at least a sanitized I version of that story. I put a picture out on Twitter of a citizen police interaction that we'll talk about on the podcast, but we'll leave it, we'll leave it at that. For I, the can't wait, I can't wait for this podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got to subscribe. All right, Mike. Yes. Two plays. Well, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the fumble and the interception. But I'd like to, I like to uh, analyze the game a little bit if I could. 
Uh, are, are by all means. <laughs> you got the closest <laughs> score prediction. I feel you've earned it. Can, can I get like a good, bad, and ugly? <laughs> you, it's your okay, show, Mike. Okay. Do whatever you want. Well, here's the good news. The good news, Penn I'm just State's... fake host. Yes, that's right. The good news, Penn State's going to go win the next five games, and they'll end up being the best 10-3 and three team in the country. The bad news, they've lost three in a row. But the ugly, the ugly, this is the worst part. I can't believe the lack of confidence, Mike... My fellow, my fellow guests, my fellow buddies have uh, not only me, but of the Penn State football team. I mean, they, they look really great. Well, I'll put it, I'll put it this way. Uh, James Franklin finally said something honest in his press conference, was, which is that uh, Sean Clifford was not 100% against Illinois, but he would be 100% against Ohio State. That much, I think, is clear. Is I don't know true. how that happened. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. I, just, I don't know what injury, like I, two I mean, weeks you're perfect, but a week you're, you're not good. I got, I, I it's was, a weird injury. I'm baffled by that. Let's, I, talk, let's I, talk about that a little bit. So he gets hit in what looks to be a relatively routine play yep. at Iowa. Yep. Comes out of the game, can't play. Has two weeks to recover. Mm-hmm. And they roll him out against the Illini. Total disaster. Yep. Like, he can't run. He can't Camp throw. Yep. He's holding his side every time he gets up off the ground. And yet, somehow, he's not ready to go to, you know, what, three weeks ago against Illinois. Gets pummeled. Pummeled. <laughs> and looked perfectly fine. And I thought played, uh, played, a, played a really good game oh, against Ohio State. Because d- despite the two turnovers, yeah. you know, arguably being the difference. Now, you can, you can point yeah. to some, some different plays throughout the game. We're also not in it unless he has a, a really Rangers. superior performance yep. passing the ball. Yep. And, you know, look, Kev, I think you can look at both of those turnovers and say that if, you know, that, I, I don't even know why we play with offensive tackles. Yeah. Like, why, I don't yeah. know why we have five. I guess by rule we've got to have guys on the line of scrimmage. We don't actually have five offensive linemen. No, we don't have five offensive linemen, offensive linemen that can play Division One football. That much is clear. But, you know, I'm a glass half full guy, Mike, as you know. Yes. And uh, <laughs> what, what really is tantalizing is Penn State <laughs> is – uh, is almost certainly seven and one at this point, but for the Sean Clifford injury, oh, yeah. yep. sitting at number six and uh, looking at you know one Alabama loss away from being in the top four. Yep. Obviously, there's four games left to play. Two of them are, will be pretty difficult, but uh, that is the frustrating part. One freak injury, yep. and uh, you are five and three instead of seven and one. Yep. That much I think is clear based on how Sean played at Ohio State and the way those previous two games went. Nevertheless, you go up against probably one of the best tailbacks in the country in Travion Henderson, mm-hmm. and eventually he does break one on you. Yeah. But the run defense that bottled up yep. Ohio State through the majority of that game. Absolutely. Night and day from what we saw in the slop on homecoming versus Illinois. I think that was the best overall game I've seen Penn State play in two or three years. I mean, overall, I think it was the best. As Penn State tends to do against Ohio State, yeah, they, uh, they, they played better three quarters of the game. They did, honestly. I, that, that, by the way, guys, is a marvel to me. There have been some really bad James Franklin teams. Mm-hmm. Like I think about that 2014 team yep. that took a national champion right to the wire. Mm-hmm. That team was stripped down to the bones yep. by the sanctions. And no matter how the team plays the rest of the year, and that's another question when you look at losses like the one to Illinois. Mm-hmm. This staff always has a month to play the Buckeyes. Yeah. Always. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. <laughs> either. Maybe it's mystifying. It's as mystifying as Clifford all of a sudden being 100%. And, and ultimately, Sean Clifford's 0 5 on the roster against Ohio State. So <laughs> as much as they entertain us, <laughs> we've never, Sean Clifford's never won. So that's sort of, I guess, emblematic of oh. much of the last half decade of Penn State football. Like I say, glass half full. That's right. And plus, we get to ruin a couple of Michigan teams' season this year, too, so that's good. Don't we? We play Michigan and Michigan State, so we'll, we'll, we'll find out what happens. Yeah. Oh, man, East Lansing will be fun. Moral victory formation. It's what we use against Ohio State. <laughs> yeah. More on that when we come back. Stay with us. It's the obligatory PSU pregame show from Pine Grove Hall in Pine Grove Mills, just Outside beautiful State College, PA. I'm your fake host, Chris Bucanati, with just Mike the Mailman and Kevin Horn. No Brandon Noble this week. He's off doing some NFL stuff. But, guys, I am totally confident in our ability to 
keep this thing going in his absence. He doesn't really contribute all that much to the show, if I'm being honest. You tell him that. I'm not going to tell yeah, him Yeah, that. I'm not, <laughs> gladly. It's nothing I wouldn't say to his face. In fact, I'll do it next week. Uh, sure, sure he will. So, Kev, I, one thing I forgot to ask you before the break about being in Columbus. So, they did a scarlet out at the horseshoe, which I... so. Much like this trend of teams rushing the field after beating Penn State as a home favorite over Penn State, this, like, I don't know, like, bizarre imitation is the sincerest form of flattery thing where other yeah. schools are trying to do a blank out <laughs> in imitation of Penn State. I don't know, it just seems odd. And for all these teams that want to insist they're not concerned with Nittany Lions football, they copy us, they taunt us, they rush the field after they beat us. Your thoughts on the scarlet out since you were there? It was fine. I don't blame the schools for doing that. I mean, I, I think Penn State leads the golf college football in fields rushed against it and number of blank outs against it, right? <laughs> right, right, be, right, right. There seems to be a correlation there. But, like, we don't try to copy other stuff from schools around the country. I mean, you know, we just kind of do our own thing, and, and it is what it is. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, it is cool seeing everyone wearing... Uh, the same color in unison. I thought Ohio State was frankly more intimidating a couple years ago, and it was a blackout. Um, okay. Which uh, I don't know. Doesn't Maryland do that? A blackout or something? Or <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't know. work out. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll find out in a few yeah. days. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Or hours, depending on when you're watching this. So the fans into it? Don't really care. They got into it quickly. I mean, once they saw Penn State was showing up with a pulse, they got. They were so excited they rushed the field afterwards. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, again, look, I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but we're all Mike the Mailman today. You're Mr. Glass, half full. You're yeah. bubbly as usual. And I feel great. I feel, yeah. even though, which is, I don't know, again, is that embarrassing that I feel this good? <laughs> on this end of a three-game losing streak after we lose our fifth straight to Ohio State? Look, ultimately how this all ends up is Penn State goes 8-4, and four, they beat Michigan, they lose to Michigan State, yep, yep. and they end up in the Outback Bowl, and we all say, well, what could have been if Sean Clifford was healthy for those two games? Could have been 10-2 and two and 11-1. And yeah. But so, so, yeah, we'll all be depressed in the end, but for now, you're like, well, actually Penn State could probably win these next four games. Well, I guess my question is, is, the, is it indicative of something problematic with the program, that we're, I think, representative of the majority of fans yeah. who are just happy to have not been embarrassed against Ohio State. We don't care that we lost. Yeah. We're, 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 we're happy to be in moral victory formation. Well, look, had, again, it all comes down to one player because this is a one-dimensional offense. Uh, it can't run the ball. By the way, it's another topic. Penn State tried to run the ball 20-plus uh, times. It's very clear that any time you try to run the ball, it's a, a wasted play. I mean, it's an absolute wasted play. You should stop trying. Um, I mean, we, and we open the game, handing the ball off twice. Uh, so I don't, I don't quite understand that. It's done. I mean, it's done. Like, like Noah Kane ain't it. <laughs> like, it's over. Um, <coughs> stop doing that. Uh, yeah, stop doing <laughs> You're right. But when, when you're one-dimensional and your quarterback's hurt, yep. that, that's, yep. that's what you get, right? That's what, that's what you get. So, I mean, and we knew this team was one-dimensional after Villanova. So in many ways, the disappointment is already past, and now I'm just sort of trying to put Penn State in the best position. Root for them to be in the best position, because I have no power, obviously. Root for them to be in the best position to get the best bull trip for me. Right now, it's all about me, Mike. Okay, go. Um, okay. And, good. Uh, uh, I really don't want the pinstripe bowl. I really, really do. As many times you know. as I have in New York, I really don't want that. 93 Penn State goes near six at large. They, they, I mean, they will be the best three-loss team in the country, and oh, I agree. best three-loss team in the country usually gets near six at large if a couple things break our way. Yeah. That is what I'm playing for now. Right on top of ruining Sparty season. Hopefully they beat Ohio State and Penn State goes in there with an undefeated Sparty at the end of the season we, and, we, and we ruin their lives just like they have for us for so many times, so many years. So there's a lot left to play for. And now we've seen Sean Clifford's back, back to, to almost full health, if not full health. Mm -hmm. And so all of the goals for the next four games are on the table. I, I would be remiss if I don't bring up a couple of questionable officiating calls in the game. Uh, potentially a John Lovett touchdown call back when he runs out of bounds. I, I, I think that's soft. Yeah. I, I, I think that call was fine. I think that call is fine too. I mean, yeah. the Ohio State defender was talented in that he did not deliberately push him out, but I yeah. think he bladed his body in such a way that caused him to run out of bounds. And Lovett said after the game that the, that the defender came over to him and said, you know, you ran out on your own. I didn't, I didn't, or I'm sorry, I pushed you out. You didn't run out on your own, which uh, that means nothing. I mean, he, Look, that, that, was, no. that was ultimately, I think, the right call. So, I mean, whatever. I can't be upset about that. 
snap infraction. Does it look uh, like a fumble to you, Mike the Mailman? You've been watching football yeah, a long yeah. time. Yeah, what is that? I, I, I had no clue what that was. I had no clue what was going on there. I, I, it looked like a fumble. Yeah, I mean. I don't, I don't. I, 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 can't, I, never heard I, I can't get, I just can't get emotion. I don't know, like, maybe it is just the, 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 the Illinois game, just one of many, like, frustrating, stupid losses in this era of Penn State football has just sort of slowly sucked the life out of me out of years that I'm to the point where we lose a game like that, and I'm like, oh, well, at least we didn't get blown out, oh, yeah. and I'm fine with that. I'm not emotional about whatever supposed bad calls. I don't care that we lost. I thought the defense played well. Yep. I never expected to win. I expected to get blown out, yep. as you were quick to remind me Sorry. at the outset, <laughs> Millman. I, I don't know if that's good or bad, but again, just being an open book, that's where I'm at. Yeah, no, I thought that the fish hitting crew was one of the better we've had this year, which again, says absolutely nothing. Um, but they don't make them like they do in 96. Like See what happens football. when you don't show up, Noble? Right, he just blows the football over me back when Penn State had an offensive line in the 90s. But uh, yeah, no, I, I wasn't so, you know, it's a queen about Penn State not leading Ohio State for the fifth time in a row. It was more of like, okay, they can actually win the next four and make something out of this. And pre preseason nine and three, I think everyone would have taken that with what optimism we from Kevin. Was. What the hell? We're going to commercial. Bye. Welcome back, Brandon. Oh, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Well, sorry. Oh, the dude abides. <laughs> there he is. There, there you go. There, there you go. go. Hi, Brandon. Okay, so obviously you are not Brandon Noble. No, not the last time I checked. Penn State professor of booze and culture, Dr. That's Kirk right. French. Mm -hmm. But we did get a lot of comments after your last appearance on the show a few weeks ago that you and Brandon were kind of having a whole like mini me thing going on now that he's growing the beard and the I hair know. out. He, I know. Look, he's kind of like, he's like a mini me. I know. Or did they mean that? Oh, I, I no, no, I, no, 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 it was, no. They definitely I, I meant that he no. was your mini me. Oh, no yeah. that. That's so that. we are here at this cool spot, not too far from your own digs in Pine Grove Mills, Pennsylvania. Ten and, houses down. Yeah, I just, I just walked cool. on down here. Nice. Yeah. So thank you, by the way, for recommending hey. Pine Grove Hall to us. Very We're happy nice. to be here. Ooh, that was a nice that. sound. Very nice. It's that Pine Grove Mills. The sound of an almost empty glass. Yeah. So, Dr. French, before we check in with you about how your semester's going and mm. whatever kind of alcohol you're making with your students or any of that crap, we all got a bone to pick with you. Oh, yeah? The only national yeah, pundit a... to pick Illinois to beat Penn State. The only one. Literally. In the country. In the in country. country. Yeah, in the country. Out of here. No. The only one in the country. Over... So we let you sit in mm -hmm. on our whole show. <laughs> we welcome you into this program as an honored guest, and we let you actually participate in the sacred ritual of the random number generator yep. segment, where you make a score prediction. Yeah. And, and you predicted what? 14-10. Uh, of Illinois. Il yeah, it was, it was, it was the Illinois. Obviously, I mean, we knew yeah. that Illinois was gonna win, so. So I am sitting in <laughs> the rain, and the cold, <laughs> trying, okay, and well, the fog, and the misery. And you get a text from me. Of, of that homecoming game. <laughs> And, and the whole, Penn State's got 10 points, mm -hmm. and Illinois has got seven. seven. Mm -hmm. And a whole time I'm thinking, like, my God, like, I, like I, I'm never going to be able to have them on the show again. <laughs> there are going to be people at my door with pitchforks blaming us for, having, for having, the loss because funny, of your prediction. Because I had a similar thought. It was 10, it got it was to, the 10 point, to 7, and it I, got knew, to I the would point never where be on I, this show again. Yeah, yeah listen, yeah. it got to the point where, Kirk, <laughs> uh, honest to God, I had resigned myself to the fact that Penn State was gonna lose. I was just like, oh, but please, Lord, don't let it be 14. <laughs> I, like, I, I was never happier than when that touchdown got called okay. back. Illegal so, man downfield, it okay. was gonna end 14. So all honesty, so I'm not, I don't watch the games, you know, but okay, I, sure. I just look on my phone, I just refresh the score every now and again. Sure, I yeah. did, it was 10-7, and I was like, wow, this is actually possible. Well, about five minutes later, a good friend of mine texts me and says, you nailed it. It's 14-10. So I go to look, and it got called back. Mm -hmm. It was 14-10 it was for just a moment. Well, it was 13-10. Ever been to Vegas? You should go to Vegas some Yeah, weekend. I've been to Vegas. Oh, you should. Yeah, they got water issues out there. Oh, I know they do. Yeah. Tell me no Mickey Mail. You'll get in anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was a... Uh, 
Really good. Good, good prediction. Yeah, it was a good prediction. I, I, I am so relieved that was not the final score. I, I, it, it almost makes it <laughs> slightly more tolerable that we lost. I, I really thought, I'm like, pe- people are going to, there's going to be a riot. Yep. We could never have them on again. You never get to make another score prediction. I don't care what you think the Maryland outcome is going to be. Do not say it. The don't Maryland say. outcome? Yeah, don't well, say it. Well, we already know what that's going to be. Don't go to State College. Come to Pine Grove Mills. Kirk French lives in Pine Grove Mills when you're riding. 2117, <laughs> Maryland. Just saying. Okay. Pine Grove Mills, not State College. Come out here. It'll take a while for the police to get out here. And then stop off and have a beer at the Pine yes, Grove Hall. Yes, totally. Yeah, this is the place. Or a nice mixed drink. They have hella mixed drinks here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah have you Scarrett's shared not, any recipes? Scarrett's not here right now. Be, unless he's back there somewhere. But uh, yeah, makes a makes a great mixed drink. We're almost out of time. How's your semester going? <sighs> it's it's not going as fast as this. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's going it's it. going better, you know. I'm looking forward to Some the end. Some viewers would disagree, but sure. I'm looking forward to the end, you know. I'm looking for- to the end of the semester, <laughs> you know. Not not humanity. <laughs> well, anyway, but the point after is, that Illinois game, I was looking forward to the end too. Wow, you know. Well, I'm not going to get into that anymore. I think no, there no. seems to be some, you know, bad blood. But anyway, Pine well, Grove Hall, thanks yep. for having us. Yep, 2117. We're going to talk to the owner on the other side. Stay with us. We filled our beers, upgraded our fake Brandon Noble. Yeah, well, wow, I, I, I think we'd all like to apologize for that appearance by Dr. Kirk French and another one of his terrible score predictions. Yeah. He's been banned from the show. He'll never be banned back. by far. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, as we've been talking about, we are here at Pine Grove Hall in Pine Grove Mills. Mm-hmm. And we are joined now by the owner of this fine establishment, another great addition to the bar scene around State College, mm-hmm. and a, a great live music venue, Liz Grove. Grove, correct. Yeah, so we've got nice symmetry yeah. going on there, Liz. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you, thanks for being here. We're excited to have you. We're trying to put Pine Grove on the map. Kirk, thanks to Kirk. Actually. Yeah, home, home of Dr. Down Kirk French. Right. Yes. Down the street. It's like, you know, when, when there's a, a high school football player in his senior year who's being recruited by a lot of schools, they'll put up the billboard. Oh, yeah. They have, they have one of those for Kirk coming into Pine Grove Hill. Right. Yeah. Home, yeah. home of Kirk French. When yeah. you, you pass the naked egg before you get here and it says home of Kirk French across the road. Correct. That's good. Yeah, we're in the middle. So, Liz, this is a cool little spot. It like, is. It's Thank you, yeah. Very cool architecture, mm-hmm. very cool vibe. And one of the things that I like about what you guys have done with the place is that you really focused on making it not just a live music menu, Mm -hmm. but I know you opened about a year ago. Yes. Awesome time to open up a new restaurant or bar. New restaurant, new live music venue, and then we had to wait to get our permits because we got shut down. Mm. Sure. So, but yeah, we rebounded. We opened last June with takeout, and so we're, we're hanging in there. You have a very unique menu, too. <laughs> your, your menu is Yeah, very yeah. Very we good. have, I think we're up to 30 local farmers now. That's so great. Er- That's cool. Everything is very cool. locally sourced. That's great. Um, and, and live music with local artists, so it's very community-minded. We're trying to put Pine Grove on the map. And you took advantage <laughs> of tough circumstances. Mm-hmm to make this not just a place where people can come here and see the music, mm-hmm. but also really optimize the space to live stream the yes. performances. Yeah, yeah. Let's we talk so, about that. Yep, so all of the bands that we have play, playing here on the first floor, when COVID happened, we thought, well, we can only put 15 people in this first floor six feet apart, so we had a whole second floor, and so we decided to get some technology, and, and so we live stream everything upstairs, all awesome. of the shows, and also out to YouTube or Facebook or whatever. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah. So there's some positive things to COVID. And we've got, <laughs> obviously, a fully stocked bar mm-hmm. behind us, and the mixed drinks are Kirk French approved, so that's yes. great. Yes, Not the only honor you guys have received recently, although that's certainly com- compared to the Kirk French seal of approval, everything is a little bit less prestigious. That's true. But that's true. By, by all that's means, true. you guys got a pretty cool recognition. Yes. Pump it up. Actually, today, uh, we got best, uh, best New Restaurant from State College Magazine's oh. Best Of. So, awesome. That's yeah. great. So we're happy about well, that. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so how has business been as things are kind of lurching back towards you know, normalcy? Yeah, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. So we're open Thursday to Sunday. Mm-hmm. We're not. A, we, we're a little short-staffed still like everybody is, so we have short sure. hours. But the community has been great. 
um, you know, they're really supporting us, and yeah, we're we're weathering through it. I think we're going to come out the other end soon, right? Good. I think yeah, Good. things are on the uptick. It, it should be. This is a really unique place. I, I enjoy it here. This is really nice. Yeah, Very nice. I've been building. saying that other side thing for about nine months. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah, no yeah, I yeah, think yeah. we're getting there. Close, though. close. Let's get through so. this winter. We'll be good. Historic building, too, yes. right? I've read, it used to be an Odd yeah. Fellows mm -hmm. temple, and then there was some other restaurants, yeah. and then you sort of mm -hmm. it revived built, it. It was oh. built in 1900, actually, as an Odd Fellows Hall, and this was a community space. They yeah. actually had vaudeville on the stage over there. So I think we're kind of coming full circle, you know. Yeah, there's so many great little towns in Pennsylvania. And like, even though this is so close to State College, you wouldn't know it if you just pulled in. It's one of those great, quintessential, yeah, yeah. small Pennsylvania point. towns that have restaurants like this in it, and that's a, a cool thing. That's a cool spot. Yeah. Another one of the little gems of Happy Valley. We're proud to show off here on the show. We're happy to be here. Thanks for having us, Liz. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody, to the obligatory PSU pregame show at Pine Grove Hall. I'm your fake host, Chris Bucanani, joined this week just by Mike the Mailman and Kevin Horn. No Brandon Noble off doing NFL stuff, but we are more than capable yes. of carrying the show in his absence. And Nittany Lions are 5-3, and three, mm -hmm. and paradoxically, I feel better at 5-3 and three than I did at 5-2. and two. And they're still ranked. I mean, they're ranked, what, 22nd? I mean, to me... People know their value. I think being five and three and still being ranked, that's, that says a lot about the program. And yeah. ranked higher than Pitt, so <laughs> order, order is <laughs> that's right. stored in the universe. <laughs> I know you love that. That's really good. Uh, oh, uh, Pitt. Oh, man. Look, at, even if Pitt won out, they were going to have a tough path into the playoff yeah. because of the Western Michigan loss. Yeah. But, of course, right? Everything's rolling. ACC's garbage. Oh. They got some Heisman hype around their quarterback, and then the wheels fall off. Yep. You hate to see it. Beautiful, beautiful. It would be nice to see Wake Forest go undefeated, though, and cause some chaos. That would be fun. I, I, agree. Be, uh, I agree. I agree it doing, would be fun. And they're doing that after losing. Now, potentially the Heisman frontrunner, Kenny Walker the third to Michigan State, who was a Wake Forest Demon Deacon last year, which is wow. just an incredible transfer portal thing. Well, uh, his Heisman hopes might be dashed when they play Penn State. That's, that would be my delight, Mike. Yes, no question indeed. about it. Indeed. Although we've seen Penn State's run defense with a, a solid, large, seeming like bulldozer back, so I'm not going to hold out too much hope, but we will do what we can. Okay. But I want to congratulate you, Mike the Mailman. You had a good week with your Trends to Treasure predictions from last weekend, yep. one of which was take Sparty over Michigan. Yep. And I, you know, you're talking about Penn State eats the loss to OSU, but looks strong and probably gets some respect from the voters, oh, stays yeah. in the top 25, yeah. uh, which I think sets Penn State up for an opportunity yeah. to rebound and finish in the top 10, Kev. Yeah, I mean, so they, if they went out, I think that's above 50%, they're in a near six bowl, which would either I be agree. Peach Bowl or the Cotton Bowl. It's an at large near six. Those are the two at large this year. Yeah. And it helps that the Rose Bowl is a Big Ten buy in. So you can finish third in the Big Ten and yes. get into the at-large, right? Okay. So, you know, most likely scenario is you have a Michigan State and Ohio State, one goes to the uh, playoffs and one goes to the Rose Bowl. That leaves Penn State at third, which gets you at-large, okay? Mm. But they gotta win out. If they don't win out, then uh, Michigan probably takes that or some other two-loss team. Yeah, um, right. You know, me, even a Wake Forest. Where, where, do you wanna, like where do you wanna go? I'd love to go to the Peach Bowl. I've never seen Penn State go to a Peach Bowl, okay. right? And I've seen them play three New Year's Six Bowls at this point, and I would love to see them uh, play in a fourth. So I, I would be rooting for Peach Bowl, ultimately. That would be fun. Atlanta is sort of a cheaper trip, too, and it, I think it'd be, it'd be nice. Yeah. Um, but you've got to win out, right? Which yeah, is, a, which is a very tall task, given that Penn State has two top ten teams left on its schedule, okay? Um, if you drop one of those, you know, you're still set up fairly well. You know, an Outback Bowl, potentially... Uh, Citrus Bowl, which is just a horror show in, in Orlando. <laughs> the last thing I want, here's the last <laughs> outcome I want. Now this is really projecting far. The last thing I want I on say. earth is gonna be a Citrus Bowl rematch with Kentucky. Oh, yes. Yeah. That is was, that what you thought I was going to say? Yeah, I thought you were going to say. Can you imagine <laughs> the cesspool yeah. that the uh, internet will be for the month leading uh, up to a game where we got to play Kentucky uh -huh. in the Citrus Bowl again against Will Levis? Oh, yeah. yeah no, I, I might just call Comcast and cancel my internet <laughs> connection. <in that. laughs> 
No. Unfortunately, Detroit is no longer a Big Ten Bowl. Bond. The Mining Car Care Bowl is no longer Big Ten. So then that leaves uh, what up, Music City Bowl in Nashville, Pinstripe Bowl in New York City. I don't, I mean, Las Vegas Bowl. Las That's the good news if we tank yeah. the season, boys. Las Vegas. That's exciting news for you, we're Mike Mel. We're, we're in. Vegas replaced Detroit. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's yeah. a nice place. Um, so, uh, you know, but right now, as it stands, Penn State's not bowl eligible. And from what that's I understand, true. the Villanova win does not count towards bowl eligibility because FCS. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's I mean, always a little bit of a, a, a wiggle. Look, really six and six Penn State yeah. still gets in. I mean, yeah. who knows if this team would accept that given their history of not accepting oh, yeah. games. That's, that that's a good point. Play, but, um, uh, I, I do think, though, to your point, that the outcome of Michigan State, Michigan means that Penn State, no matter what happens when Sparty plays Ohio State, is going to be set up with enough good opponents down the road that they can really burnish a New Year Six style resume yeah. if they just play like they did against the Buckeyes. Oh, yeah. Like that game that lost Penn State, the game against Ohio State, I think wins out the rest of the schedule. Nate, uh, I think so. Two, uh, Michigan State's tough, right? Because I don't, I don't like yep. how the offense matches up with our defense. As good as yep. Penn State's defense has been, I, I, Kenny Walker scares me. He does. Um, and out in East Lansing where there's still demons, although we exercised some of them last time, it still makes me uneasy walking into that place the two days after Thanksgiving. You know, I've done that before, and it's not, not gone well. And how about this? That matchup coming up in a few weeks with Michigan is huge oh, yeah. for Jim Harbaugh. Oh, yeah. Uh, he loses to Penn State. He's staring at 0-3 yeah. against the big three in the Big Ten East. Glad that's but Beaver Stadium. Glad before that we can get to that, to Maryland, we'll talk about it next. Who needs Brandon Noble? Not us. Welcome back to the obligatory PSU pregame show. We need you, Brandon. From Pine Grove Hall. I'm Chris Bucanati with Mike the Mailman and Kevin Horn. We're all missing Brandon Noble. We He'll are. be back next week, yes. and we'll be glad to have him back. Yes. But for now, boys, we got to think about this trip to College Park. Do we have to. <laughs> yeah, you have. Actually, my first trip to College Park was in 1975, Penn State playing Maryland. Uh, I had a friend who taught school down in Rockville, and Penn State won the game 17-15, although Maryland had a chance to win it uh, with like a 37-yard field goal at the end. But like all Maryland teams, they and it was they, they missed South's it. father actually who was there and, and missed the field goal. Yeah, it, yeah, it's like they missed it. I mean, uh, what else do you expect from Maryland? They're, they're, no. Penn State has <laughs> forty <they're>, wins. <laughs> yeah. Against Maryland, yep. uh, one tie, three losses, two of which have been coached by James Franklin. I've seen them both. And that's right. You've mentioned there have been some close shaves. Over the years. Yeah. I think, it w wasn't it the national championship season over here? Uh, right. Stopped two-point conversion. That's Mike, right. am I remembering yeah, that right? You're right, yeah. yeah 82 right. was 39-31. Of course, I know this off the bat. And the other Coke bottle does not have, have the, the schedule, score. so it doesn't help you. I assume Chris is right. <laughs> anyway, it was a close one. <laughs> it was. Maryland is the sort of opponent that Penn State ought to run off the field easily. But they, once, but yeah, once. yeah. Some, somehow, I mean, they, they've, they've cobbled together five wins. They've done yeah. what they've done the last few years under Mike Loxley, which is look impressive early on, yeah. get into the conference schedule, get absolutely tattooed. And, it, you know, it all goes back to me to, like, we went out there on a Friday night in 2019. They had the blackout, total embarrassment for them. Same thing happens when Iowa visits this year and the wheels just totally come off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you ought to feel very confident about Penn State getting that bowl eligibility win this weekend, and I, you know, and I don't. The only game that comes close to Illinois this year is Maryland last year as far as James Franklin disappointments or Penn State in the history of the program disappointments. You're right. That's, I mean, Lou Prado probably has some like, oh, Lehigh defeated the Indian Lions <laughs> by 20 in 1907 <laughs> when he was at Old Beaver Field. But... Um, <laughs> I mean, they have the same quarterback as last year that, that just, just dominated oh, Penn State. Yeah. Tua Jr. I'm not even going to try to say his name. Okay. Tua's brother that transferred there from yeah. Alabama. <laughs> um, who's had a, a decent season. They have a running back, Fleet Davis, who puts up, you know, five, six yards of carry. Now, look, this is a different, this is a night and day defense from what Penn State had last year, even without P.J. Mustafer. 
Um, you know, the only reason Ohio State sure. had any points really was just a couple miscues on the weakest part of our defense. Yep. Uh, Tariq Castro, uh, Fields missed tackle, yep. Brandon Smith out of position. Those are their sort of big plays, right? Um, even if the Maryland does that, I think Maryland is Maryland and Penn State will be able to win. Yep. But Maryland has some decent players. They, we have the same record, same conference record, same overall record as Maryland does. Now, obviously, that's a stupid comparison because Maryland's played no one. But you know, I can't get that feeling that yeah. we had in the 2020 Maryland game out of my stomach, especially because most of the team is back from last year that just dominated Penn State they did dominate. in every facet of the game. So obviously it's night and day from last year. It's totally different, but this is just a recipe. You know, Maryland's trying to just break through to get into the middle tier of the Big Ten. It's a home game. The students are going to be there. It's middle of the afternoon. I mean, this is like a classic although, Penn State field rushed against game that's, that's although, setting up in front of our eyes. Although, although this, year, this season, Penn State has played better away than home. I mean, they, they played, obviously, Wisconsin well. They, could have, they should have won the Iowa game, the injury, but I yeah. think, and I play Ohio State well. I think it'll, 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 Well, we'll see. I mean, you're not we'll going to run against Maryland, right? I, I, I haven't even looked up their defensive line. I don't, I don't, who cares? It doesn't matter. We're not going to be right, able to, right. Like, Mike the Mailman and Johnny Baker are on the defensive line of Maryland. They can't, they're not going to be able to run against them, right? So that's just, we know that. Yeah. So can Sean Clifford give us close to 400 yards like he did against Ohio State, against Maryland? If he can, we win. If he makes too many mistakes, again, Sean Clifford's good for two or three big mistakes per game. That is a guarantee. It's a given. Will his mistakes come in the, the right moments where we can recover and he can do his thing and put together a, a, an above average game like he has most of the season? Yep. I think the answer is ultimately yes, but I don't, I don't feel great about it. And 11 points, like the mailman, is way too many. We'll get to our random numbers later, but mm, it's just this game, this game makes me queasy. It makes me queasy. I'll put it that way. Although I feel a lot better about it than I did before the Ohio State game oh, last yeah. week. I think this game is important in so far as we just talked about what's ahead of Penn State in terms of being able to really salvage the season and maybe finish 10 and three and have everybody feeling pretty good yeah. about where we are in terms of bringing in a number one recruiting class, mm -hmm. you know, having all kinds of crazy contract and, and facilities negotiations to keep James Franklin in Happy Valley. We won't touch that third rail on this show, but it all begins, I think, with setting a tone for this final stretch run of the season in College Park, because we've seen what the good teams in the Big Ten have done to Maryland, which is kick them around. Yeah. And you gotta start right from the get-go. Yeah. No question, go right after them, right away. Yeah, so yep. I think setting the tone yep. out there on the road yep. is very important. Brandon said a couple of weeks ago, the schedule sets up that you have a hard game, an easy game, a hard game, an easy game. Yep. You gotta do, what our other former letterman who likes to join us, Goon, says he always used to tell the guys on the team that when you would be playing a team that you knew on tape when you saw them had inferior talent, guys, treat them like you were Penn State and they're Maryland. Yep. Go out and go after it right. early on in the yep. first quarter and yep. then don't take your foot off the gas until you're ready to put take one Roberson in the game. That's what I think. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it's not, I mean, College Park is not an intimidating place to play. Like, yep. it's, it, you no. know, as much as the home field advantage matters, this is not that big of a deal. No. Um, it's just like the roster returns so many players from last year if you're Maryland. And Penn State was not even 10% as good as Maryland last year. Oh. So we'll see. But it's, they gashed us in our building, I, embarrassed us. I do not feel good about any game Penn State has going forward at this point in time. This weekend will be a big sign. We'll see. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Mike the Mailman. If you or your loved one or a friend has a gambling problem, don't hesitate to call the number below on the screen. They're there to help. Hi, everybody. Mike the Mailman back with another edition of Trends to Treasure. This will be the weekend of November 13th and 14th. First up, we have Arizona State at Washington. Arizona State has covered seven of the last seven games, so go with Arizona State. Our second pick this week, we have Arkansas State at University of Louisiana Monroe. Arkansas State has covered a whopping 11 straight games, so go with Arkansas State. Unbelievable. Our third selection this weekend, we have Syracuse at Louisville. Louisville has covered six of the last seven games, so go with Louisville. For our bonus pick this week, we go to the NFL. We have Seattle at Green Bay. 
Green Bay has covered five of the last five games, so go with the Green Bay Packers as our pick this week. And that's it for this week's edition of Trends of Treasure. I'm Mike the Mailman, and don't forget, bet with your head and not with your heart. Go get them. Let's keep that momentum going. Let's keep it going. Mike oh, yeah. the Mailman. Yeah. Listen, I, look, I get all the, let's, oh, let's play an undefeated top five Michigan team. No. I root against Michigan all the time. <laughs> I was thrilled to see that trend yep. hit and, I, I and Sparty win. I love these trends. Especially. Okay, so it's the random number generator segment, <clears throat> time of the show where we show off the total stupidity of trying to pick score predictions, unless you're Kirk French, That's right. apparently, I don't know. But you've only got the three of us here today to give our three predictions, and we're happy to have you along for the ride, for this stretch run for the Nittany Lions, chasing after that nine and three regular season. Chris Bucanani, Mike the Mailman, Kevin Horn, Brandon Noble back next week. Thanks again to Pine Grove Hall for having us. Very cool space. Check them out. If you're local, come on out. Make sure you make a reservation, by the way. Yeah, come um, in on a Friday before a football game and spend yeah, the Friday a, night nice in Pine Grove Mills before you yeah, go out downtown. Cool. But make no a traffic. reservation. You just, it's a great place to be. Post office across the street, Mike, so if you need to mail something, there you go. One six eight six eight. The boys on, are over on, there working hard. Yeah. Brandon? 3118, Brandon said. I just got a call. Noble says 3118. Yep, he did. Yep. All right. That's great. So there you have it. Noble's got the Nittany Lions winning. I always get nervous when we're playing a team we're supposed to beat. Yeah. Uh, historically, right. <laughs> we stub our toes. I'll use a TV safe analogy at least once a year under this coaching staff against a team that we really ought to beat. Uh, we have a habit of doing less with more <laughs> against teams with inferior talent. Uh, we're on the road. We're playing a team we ought to manhandle. Yep. One that embarrassed us, as we talked about last season. Different situation. But here we are. Mike the Mailman. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll right with you, buddy. What do you got? I, I think the, the, the Nittany Lions uh, will take their time and win by like 17, 18 points. Okay. I think, uh, but, but like you said earlier, they got to start at Back the get-go. Back to not giving a score, okay. Yeah, not yeah. giving a score. Uh, Just to, <laughs> right. They got to roll into it. They got to dominate from the beginning, and that's, uh, that's what you should do. And like Brandon said last couple of weeks ago, if they would have scored 14 points against Illinois, Illinois couldn't run that offense. And I think the same thing is true here. Just get them early and off them. And just take them out of the game early. That's what we need to do. Again, if the Penn State passing game can be, I mean, again, look, we all agree they're going to be one-dimensional, right? Mm -hmm. They can't right, run the ball right. against anybody. And yeah. They ought not to try. They ought to stop trying. I know. Yeah. You're right. But, you know, screen passes will be the running game or whatever. Sure. That's yeah. fine. That's good. Those work. If the Penn State passing game can be 75% of what it was versus Ohio State last week, yep. they should gash the Maryland defense. So yeah. you, you said, and I agree, that they need to jump on them early. Will they? Yeah, that's the key. <laughs> so you think there's going to be a 17, 18 point final score? Yep. Give me the point differential after the first quarter. Uh, the Nits would be up by like 11. Okay. So All you're right. predicting a rough three quarters at the end there. Yeah, I am. Okay. Am. All right. Okay. They need, or, to be, they need to be in a four-quarter game again. Like they were, last week, they were... Or, or, or Maryland scores garbage time. Points. Yeah, that's, that's good. Garbage is good. <laughs> yeah, look, Let, let's stress look, first. Look, if, let's, we're in a game, if we're in a game that has an opportunity to be called garbage time in yeah. the fourth quarter, and this is not for Maryland, I'll be very happy. Let's so. stress for, for you two guys, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> Horn, what do you got? Um, well, this is tough, right? I, I'm, I'm picking Penn State. I don't feel great about it. The line is about 11. 11 yeah. Anyway, Mike, I should say, I have an old friend who moved to Pittsburgh. I hadn't talked to him in probably a decade. He found our show. He bets every week everything on trends to treasures and what you say for the Penn State score. Um, he's for, his house is being foreclosed on, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> and he wanted me to tell you thank you for all that, those hours of fun. Please bet responsibly. Um, <laughs> play last week. 1 800 gambler. That's right. I am going to say 27 <laughs> to 20. Uh, with Maryland having a, a chance to win at the Ooh. end, Tariq Castro Fields blowing a tackle with Brandon Smith out of position, <laughs> the Maryland runner getting to the seven-yard line, and Jaquan Brisker saving the game for Penn State, um, oh, and Penn State winning by a touchdown oh, in College Park. Uh, but again, I don't feel great about that. I just, this defense is, look, this defense is too good to lose to Maryland. They're too good to lose to Maryland, even without P.J. Mustafer. Yeah, they're they're right. too good to lose to Maryland. Apparently, Parker Washington, our tight ends, can catch footballs now. That will go a long way to beating Maryland next week and 
tonight, depending on when you're watching this. So um, picking any lines, but don't feel good about it, and Maryland to cover. If that scenario you just described plays out anywhere close <laughs> no. to the way you described it on the field, next week it's going to be you two and Brandon Noble because I'll be dead of a heart attack. Yeah. So <laughs> final random number generator score falls to me. Yes. And honestly, guys, again, maybe this is just where we're at as a program that I am feeling good after the moral victory in Columbus, but I, I don't think it's going to be a close game. I, I'm going to call it 34 to 17 Penn State. I think Nittany Lions do what they need to do on defense. And again, anything close to the offense we saw last week against the Terps defense, Penn State will win comfortably. Penn State wins against Maryland more often than not. That's what I got. Getting into the stretch run. Thanks for staying with us. We'll be back next week. Go State, beat Maryland. <laughs>